So the government tells us they cannot possibly afford to maintain a slight increase in the level of universal credit. They couldn't possibly spare the money to pay for poor children to have free school meals during the half-term holidays. Oh my goodness, we just can't stretch to it. We're so stony broke, but apparently, did you know, we can afford two and a half billion to build four new massive mega prisons. And the government's website about it reads like a holiday brochure, right? It's like they're trying to sell cannibalism as the new super meat. <laughs> it says this, at the heart of the government's commitment to 10,000 new prison places. It makes it sound like you should move to a better area to get your kids in the good prison, doesn't it? <laughs> These buildings will use new technology and modern methods of construction. I mean, waffle, 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 we get it. Watland Daub is out. Nobody builds their houses out of straw or twigs anymore because that third pig was really onto something. I googled it. Do you know what the new prisons are going to be made out of? Concrete. Welcome to the 21st century. That's modern technology for you. Woohoo! Boosting efforts to cut crime and kickstart the economy. Increasing the prison population doesn't cut crime. That's just a fact. Firstly, countries with higher rates of incarceration do not have lower crime rates, so don't be fooled by that. Secondly, people given a prison sentence of less than a year are more likely to re-offend than people given a community service order or a suspended sentence. It's just, it's just not effective. It messes people's lives up, makes them more likely to offend. Secondly, kick-starting the economy. I mean, sure. There's a few short-term jobs for builders and construction companies, yeah. But those jobs end, and then after that, we're just taking people's jobs away by locking them up. If you want to boost the economy by paying people to build something, you know, just radical suggestion, maybe make it a library. And the tabloids are full of stories about people who've committed horrendous crimes and been given a terribly short sentence. It's usually domestic violence or rape. And I just want to say, on behalf of womankind, that this feels a lot like when we invaded Afghanistan because women had to wear the burqa, didn't it? You know, they were all like, we're here for you girls, and then once they'd invaded and done exactly what they wanted on their own agenda, we were like, are you going to sort out the... Uh, uh, oh, you, you're not. Oh, we just thought that's what it was... Oh, sorry, that was just... Stop using women and using, like, the victimhood of women as an excuse to do what you want. If you care about victims of domestic violence and rape, and you should, Let's start campaigning to have much better education in schools talking about equality and women's rights and the history of the women's rights movement. Let's have consent classes being taught to every child as they go through the system. Let's have women who report these crimes being taken seriously, being treated with respect, not having intrusive things pushed into their lives, their phones confiscated, all this nonsense. And let's fight for justice for the 99% of perpetrators who don't ever see a courtroom or a police officer or get anything done about their crimes. Let's solve all those problems and we'll argue about sentences later. Okay, because I don't want you using my circumstances to justify your two and a half billion mega prison. And don't be fooled into believing that these occasional stories you read are indicative of a sort of broader softening of the justice system and that now oh, you can get away with murder. The fact is that in the last 30 years, the prison population of the UK has increased by 70%. 70% of those in prison are therefore non-violent offences. Half of prison sentences given are less than six months. One in 20 people in prison in the UK is there on remand awaiting trial, which means they have not yet been convicted of anything and they may be found not guilty. Since 2006, the number of people serving sentences of 10 years or more has gone up by 250%. Let's be honest, we are turning into America. And just like America, our prison system has a monstrous problem with racism. So 15% of the prison population is there for drug offences. Black and Asian offenders are more likely than white offenders to be given a prison sentence if convicted of a drugs offence. How much more likely? 240%.
And that's before we even take into account the horrendous way that the police's stop and search policy has targeted young black men on our streets. It goes before we even start to talk about institutionalised racism in innumerable police forces, about drugs being planted on young suspects that they can't seem to pin anything else on. The system is absolutely corrupt. The fact is that drugs are a white middle class problem. Firstly, we know that because all the Tories have done them. They've admitted it. They've openly admitted it. Right? Secondly, if you don't believe that drugs are a middle class white problem, answer me this. Why are they the only thing left in our society that is still sold in imperial measures? <laughs> like you buy drugs in an eighth, right? <laughs> My liege. I must beseech you for a bushel of cannabis and two pecks of your finest heroin. It's so obvious when you think about it. And it's not even the only crime that the Tories are guilty of. So we found out this week that Matt Hancock has broken the law um, in terms of the way that he dished out contracts to private companies and to his mates during the pandemic. And needless to say, these new prisons will not be run by the state. They will be run by private companies. And that's a problem for two reasons. Firstly, I get it. We live in a democracy. If I break the law, some surly individual in a lot of Kevlar shows up at the door and takes me away. And I have to call that person sir or madam and I have to do what they say. And I'm okay with that on the understanding that that person is a representative of the government that I voted for. But I'm not okay with that if that person is there because they're an employee of G4S or Serco. Does it, that's not the same thing, is it? I shouldn't have to call somebody Sir just because they work for Serco. <laughs> Look at me and my puns. It's also a problem having private companies run prisons because when conditions in prisons are terrible, and footnote, they are. Two thirds of inmates in British prisons have self-harmed. Half of inmates in British prisons have been assaulted while they've been in prison. During the pandemic, some prisoners have been kept in their cells for as much as 23 hours a day. Conditions are terrible. They failed to meet rehabilitation targets. They failed to meet education targets in prisons. It's not being done right. And when these private companies screw up in their provision of services to schools and hospitals, there is at least a public backlash. There is a call for these things to be reassessed and done better. It is very, very hard to build public support for making conditions better in prisons because there is such widespread sense of they got they done wrong lock them up throw away the key it's such a widespread attitude but you know right now we're awaiting the outcome of the appeal for the freshwater five five men who were sentenced for a total of 104 years in prison for drug offenses that the new emerged evidence suggests they almost certainly could not have done we do need to spend some money making prisons better, bringing them back under state control so that they can be done properly and effectively and actually solve the problem that they're there to solve. What we don't need is four new, massive, incredibly expensive mega prisons. Look at the money we're spending. 2.5 billion on 10,000 new prison places. That is 250,000 pounds per individual being locked up. I'm sorry, but it is quite obvious to me that for £250,000 there is a really effective way to keep someone out of prison and I'd like to spend the first lot locking up the Tories if we don't mind. See you next week. <laughs>